So this is a full balance of payments account. Um, this is for the country of China. What I'd like to show you is um, how to calculate something called a net capital inflow or outflow in, in the case of a negative number. Let's take a look for just one year. Again, we're going to use 2013. And to calculate a net capital inflow or outflow, we take a look at these two categories of the balance of payments. These are like the two financial categories for the balance of payments. The current account, that's goods and services. Those are physical stuff or um, uh, services provided. But these are financial products, stocks, bonds, um, money inflows to build a factory, financial investments, capital. And so if these are capital inflows that we're looking at, these are inflows, we can tell they're inflows for, for China at least because they're positive numbers. If you see where these little red dots are, um, that's what we're looking at, the 3,000 and the 343,000. So to calculate the net capital inflow for 2013 for China, we just add these two numbers up, the 3,000 plus the 343, uh, gets us the net capital inflow amount. And again, it's an inflow because it's these two numbers are positive. The total is going to be 346,000. And for 2013, this is an inflow because the overall number is, is positive. And so what that means is that um, basically non-Chinese are, you know, net buying the flow of funds into China. There's capital flowing into the country during this year for the purposes of investment and investing in financial assets. But note that that's not the same um, from one year to the next. And so if we go from, say, 2013, and we just kind of eyeball it, we see that um, in subsequent years, there's actually large amounts of net capital outflows, money, uh, foreign investors leaving the country um, and taking their capital out. That reverses in 2017 through 2019, but uh, 2020, it begins again and we see cap capital outflows again. So countries, of course, are dynamic. Um, and so the balance of payments are kind of reflecting that. Really, what we're seeing is a year by year mm, dashboard, if you will, of what this country is doing economically with other countries around the world. And that changes from year to year based on macroeconomic conditions based on political conditions, uh, all sorts of things. But it's really, you know, reading about what's going on economically with country um, and, and how it's doing business with other countries. And these are pretty broad accounts that we're looking at just for the purpose of illustration and for exercise. But if you do go to the IMF, you can actually get more detailed figures. So you can drill down to the capital account balance um, and see more detailed categories. You can drill down to the current account balance and get specific categories, say by industry, you know, how many, um, exports, exports of farming equipment are, is, is China exporting for the year relative to, to imports of the same good. And then things get kind of interesting when you drill down to those specific categories particularly for countries that have closed or semi-closed capital accounts. So, uh, sorry, what I mean is capital controls. When a country institutes capital controls, China, for example, as of right now, has capital controls on its citizens so that um, I think it's, they can't take out more than $50,000 a year out of the country. There's just, it's forbidden um, legally. But you can take capital out for the purpose of certain circumstances, like, you know, if you need to study abroad, you're allowed to take out more money. If you need, if you need to um, invest in a certain business venture or you need to take out money for the purpose of exports, then you're allowed to take more capital out of the country. So there's capital controls, but it's the amount that you can take out under those controls depend on the type of category of business that you're doing internationally. And so sometimes you see these funny things, um, like I, I saw something in the news where um, a Chinese citizen got arrested 
for violation of capital controls because they had um, they had taken out, I think, something like $2 million for the purpose of, quote unquote, studying abroad in Canada. And obviously, it doesn't take $2 million to study abroad in Canada. What they're trying to do is move capital out of the country, but classifying it as a particular category, which um, permitted a certain larger amount of capital to flow out. And so these things pop up um, when you look at the amount that a country reports of exports of a particular good or category and the amount of imports that all the countries, the other countries doing business with that country um, classify for that same category. If you sum up all of the imports of all the countries, you should have the same number that um, in this case, China is classifying as an export for that same good. They, you know, it's, it's, they're just two sides of the same coin. When they don't match, often it's the case of someone trying to circumvent capital controls. Okay. Um, since one final thing, let's just cap it off. Since this is, we're looking at net capital inflows or outflows, let's look at just one year for the purpose of thoroughness of net capital. Uh, calculating net capital outflow. And as mentioned, there's a few years that we can pick. Um, let's pick 2020, the most recent year that we have in this data set. The net capital inflow or outflow, we take 77 um, and also the other number, the 77,759. And, um, you know, we combine these two together to get. Uh, a net capital outflow of minus 77,836. It's an outflow because we have that negative number there. 